so I think a lot more people these days are recording themselves doing maths lectures uh, because of the coronavirus situation. Um, so I just wanted to show you what I use, uh, the sort of setup I use on my computer. It works very well for me on Linux. I don't know how well it works on other operating systems. So the main thing I use is this um, big sheet of paper you can see over here. This is a program called Xurnal. That's an R and an N. Um, this is, as I say, basically just a piece of paper you can draw on. Uh, you can make your line straight by clicking on this little ruler icon. And you can make different colored lines. Um, yeah, not much more to say. It's fantastic. It works exactly the way you want it to. Um, it was invented originally by a guy called Denio Ru, who is a, an amazing symplectic geometer, as well as someone who makes stuff like this. Um, on the left hand side, you can see what I use for actually capturing what's going on on the screen. This is a program called VocoScreen. Uh, it just sits there running. I try and make sure that the uh, area of the screencast is just limited to um, the page rather than capturing the whole thing, except that I want to show you this now. So that's why I'm, I've extended the size of the screen. Um, there's not much to say about focus screen. It's very simple. Uh, you you make sure that your setup is right so that you know your um, it's picked out the right microphone for you and everything. Uh, and you tell it whereabouts to save the video clips that you're recording and then you just press start and it starts recording and you press stop and it stops. You can pause it and that's about it. Um, it saves chunks of video. There's no way of kind of go, going back and editing them in this program. This really just saves chunks of video. So what I do is I stop and start again um, and I end up with a, a sequence of video chunks um, let's and so um, now I can navigate to um, wherever I've been hiding them and you can see there's a couple of files there MKV files um, which you can then go and splice together using another program. So I use Flowblade. I'll show you that in a second. And because the microphone I've got isn't that great at picking up the audio, um, I also run it through a program called FFmpeg with some uh, instructions for how to increase the volume and compress the file. So I'll show you those next. Okay, we're back on my other computer because it seems to handle flow, flow blade better than my computer with a big screen. So let's get flow blade up. Still crashes sometimes, such is life. Um, okay, I am gonna create a new project in Flowblade. I have to tell it what kind of files it's supposed to be producing. I happen to know that it's this one near the top. I only know that because Flowblade told me when I tried to import some of the video clips, so it'll probably tell you too. I'm taking it down to one video stream, one audio stream. It's not really important either. And now I'm going to add the clips. So this is a video I just made um, about uh, simultaneous equations. So I'm importing all the different chunks that I recorded and here they are. Now I'm just going to drag them and drop them onto the timeline. Um, I'm going to zoom out to see the whole timeline. Now this will just give me a sense of how long the video is. Uh, so we're already hitting the 10 minute mark. All right. Obviously, most of my videos are more than 10 minutes, but you know, it's best if we can keep them down a little bit. Um, now, okay, so here it looks like we're moving to three-dimensional space. 
So I wonder where, right, so th this video first starts talking about simultaneous equations in the plane and then in three dimensions. It looks like this is the the transition. I'm just going to watch this. I don't think you'll hear it because it's in my headphones. Um, okay, so that's going to be the end of the first video. And then, yeah, okay, so I'm going to have to delete this clip and this clip and I'll stick them into another video. Um, so it wasn't designed that way, so it'll be a bit jumpy, but if I had longer, I'd re-record it, but I don't have an infinite amount of time. So I'm going to just render timeline and this will create for me a video. For some reason, it always creates it in my home directory in a file called movie.mpeg, no matter what I do. Let me just check that that file isn't there already. No, it's not. Where is it gone? Okay, so um, sorry about that. So I am going to render timeline and then it's going to do this. It's going to take about 10 minutes, maybe slightly less to render that video. Um, so I'm going to stop now and come back later. And we're back. Um, that's finished now. So let me just check that actually produced a video. Um, there it is. Okay, so I don't really want to be called Movie MPEG. I don't want it to be in that folder. Um, so I'm going to move it to where it should be. Um, it's going to be in finished. Right. Okay. So here are all the videos I've got so far for this course. Uh, and there's movie MPEG at the end. Um, I should have called it something else. Uh, it's going to be called 17 geometric dot mpg. Now this is too big. If we look at how big it is, um, it's a little tricky to spot, but it's the last one in, and it's, um, one, uh, let, let's list it in human readable form. It's 108 megabytes at the moment, which is too big. Also the volume is probably not so good. So I'm going to run some FFmpeg commands um, to make it better, to make it smaller and more audible. So let me just remind myself what those commands are. Okay, so they're here at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. Let me tell you, it's FFmpeg hyphen I, that's input, and then I tell it which file it is. So in this case, it's 17 geometric MPEG. And then hyphen V codec, that's telling it which um, encoding thing to use. So I'm using libx265, which makes the files quite a lot smaller. Um, and uh, hyphen CRF36, I'm not entirely sure what that does, but it's something to do with the uh, compression. Uh, it sort of makes it even smaller. Um, and then hyphen AF quotes volume equals 15 decibels. That's going to increase the volume by 15 decibels. Um, and finally, I tell it what file to output, which is 17 underscore geometric dot mp4. And now that is going to take a little while to run. So again, I'll come back when it's done. OK, we're back and um, you can see it's finished and it's now only 14 megabytes. Um, as opposed to 108 megabytes. So that's quite a big improvement. So what I want to show you now is what I do next. Once I've got the video, I upload it to YouTube. I'm not going to show you how to do that. I'm sure you can figure that out. Um, but I also create a web page um, with embedded notes. Um, hang on, where's this gone? Okay. Uh, So here you can see this is a web page corresponding to one of the first videos in this 
course on matrices. Uh, it's got the video sitting at the top, some navigation stuff, and then uh, notes with pictures and uh, equations and stuff, and crucially timings so that people can see whereabouts in the video to look if they were reading the notes and want to refer back to the video. So here's how you produce that. Uh, this is the source code here. It's not written in HTML. It's not written in LaTeX. It's written in some sort of shorthand that I devised, which I call lazy LaTeX. Um, so, you know, you can use, for example, a hashtag to start an environment or a, a like a... So this, for example, this will be inside center tags, this little bit here. Um, this hyphen starts a bullet point list. I just find it easier than writing, you know, brackets UL, brackets LI, or slash begin itemize. Um, and then the, the lecture notes down here, um, you can see there's there's LaTeX, uh, there's ticks. This is a ticks picture. This is how you produce the, the diagrams. Um, and um, yeah, so once you've got this file, this is I, I, it's called an LZL file, lazy LaTeX file. You can run the lazy LaTeX um, program on it, which is a Python script I wrote. So this is my GitHub page. If you go to my repositories, um, I think it's the top one there, LZL. Um, it's got a readme file that tells you the kind of syntax you need to write in your source code to produce the output you want. Um, and then there's a program, LZL Py, it's a Python script. So you just need to make sure that's executable and um, you just run it. Uh, of course, you should never just run an executable file someone tells you to run so you should check through it first and make sure it's not doing anything uh, obscene but I assure you it's not um, and so you call it by typing lzl.py the file name you're interested in and then the output that you want so over here I noticed actually there was a cos and a sign that were a bit dodgy let's um, let's search for cos Can anyone see a cause that doesn't have... Ah, yeah, there we go. So there's a cause that needs a backslash to make it into a properly typeset cosine. So I'm going to save that, and then I'm going to run lzl.py01 matrices.lzl HTML. I want to convert into an HTML file. That should have worked. Um, Sorry, I'm going doing the wrong thing. So I now want to go and just check that that's done it correctly. Um, does that cause look right now? Yes, it was in this matrix here. It now looks correct. It was, it was uh, italicized before. Okay, so that's how you use the program. I was just trying to demonstrate how you use the program. Um, okay, so once you've got that, then you've got a, a nice set of um, notes with videos embedded, uh, which hopefully the students will find useful.